In a world where growing noise pollution increasingly threatens our well-being, you just need to look around to notice one common thread. Many of us rely upon headphones when in public spaces. This is largely due to personal music devices, the use of which increased from 18.3% to 76.4% over seven years. Whether it be for entertainment purposes or even to mask the undesirable sounds of an environment, headphones truly do provide a sense of privacy in a public space. However, a study published in 2010 found that of the participants using personal audio devices, 80% were more likely to suffer from hearing impairment issues. Over time, the misuse or overuse of headphones can be detrimental to our hearing. So how can we enjoy audio in a public space without becoming this guy? Personal sound. Zones. Zones. Personal sound zones are specified regions within the same space whereby different audio programs can be delivered to each region with minimal interference between regions. For example, in the perfect implementation, while generating a region of complete silence for this person by the windows, two loudspeaker arrays can deliver opera to the person over here and something completely different to the people over here. Using a traditional stereo system, that's going to sound something like this. But by using this technology, each listener can enjoy their own audio without interference. There are many applications, from personal audio devices that use miniature loudspeaker arrays, to car audio implementations that deliver separate audio streams to each passenger. Personal sound zones could fundamentally change the way we consume audio. Some applications even lie within the realm of Orwellian science fiction, like the scene from the film Minority Report. Welcome back to the Gap. How those assorted tank tops work out for you? So how does this technology work? The multi-zone sound control problem is the most fundamental element. It basically states that given a sound field's control points, loudspeakers, and the associated transfer functions, the source strengths to reproduce the sound field can be defined. Here we are delivering two audio programs to zone A and B using a loudspeaker array. The audio intended for zone A identifies that zone as the target or bright zone, and zone B as the quiet or dark zone. You'll notice the pressure controlling microphones located in each zone. These gather two fundamental elements, the source weight vectors and complex pressure vectors. The source weight vectors denote the driving signals for every given loudspeaker at every given frequency. They can be seen as digital filters. L represents the total number of loudspeakers. Q is the source weight vector value at the Qth speaker. Microphone arrays are placed within both zones to generate the complex pressure values for each zone independently. The transfer function representations of the pressure values in each bright zone are represented by these equations. There are three categories of methods, sound focusing, sound cancelling, and sound field synthesis. Energy cancellation techniques can be seen as an evolution of the beamforming approach. In addition to increasing sound energy within the target zone, an extended region of attenuation is created in the quiet zone. Acoustic contrast control is a promising method that calculates the sum of squared pressures in both zones and uses the ratio between them to maximize the contrast between zones. Because acoustic contrast control minimizes the sound pressure level within the quiet zone, a feature that beamforming does not have, it is able to achieve excellent contrast between zones and masses the planarity of traditional beamforming approaches. Planarity is the term used to evaluate the performance of the target zone. A high level of planarity is equivalent to uniform distribution of energy within the target zone. Unfortunately, both control techniques exhibit the same problem. Although they achieve adequate contrast, they are hindered by audio artifacts caused by uncontrolled phases within the target zone. This can result in an unstable planarity. Only one method is able to address this issue, pressure matching. The method stems from the traditional cross-door cancellation problem, where small regions of personal audio can be created by controlling the pressure of the sound field at discrete spatial locations. This method is able to resolve the uncontrollable phase issues and provide a more stable planarity, unfortunately at the cost of zone contrast and large power consumption. So now we reach the problem with current personal sound zone technology. Methods cannot demonstrate good planarity and good contrast simultaneously. Hybrid approaches are intended to resolve this trade-off between fidelity and interference. While ACC provides a high degree of contrast, the PM synthesized field is able to control the phases within zones. This type of approach could be fundamental to consumer applications in the future.